Hello, my name is Darren Thomas, and I am the, re the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this particular video, we're going to learn how to use AdaBoost with regression with the Python language. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. Now we've talked about AdaBoost in a prior video, but we are focused on classification. So just like before, AdaBoost is about ensemble learning. You're making many, many different models you're aggregating them, you're averaging together, or you're letting the votes count if it's classification to determine a prediction for the values in the de dependent variable, or you can also call it the outcome variable. So this is just like the last video, except now our dependent variable is going to be continuous rather than categorical. So our steps are mentioned right here. We gotta prepare our data. We're going to make a regression decision tree as our baseline model so that we have an idea of, okay, if we only ran one model, what can we expect? And what we're hoping for generally is that by using AdaBoost, we can improve the performance of the model. In other words, since we're using regression, we're trying to reduce the amount of error that is calculated in the model, which means that our model is better at predicting um, future values in other data sets. Step number three right here is we have to tune the hyperparameters. And then step number four, we actually are going to create our AdaBoost regression model. So right here in this particular cell, as you can see, we have all the various packages and, and things that we need. Whoops. So let me go back down here. So we have to, of course, import the AdaBoost regressor. That's line one. We have to import the, the decision tree algorithm, that's line number two. Line number three is for the grid search, more about that later. Number four, line number four, we import, import NumPy. Line number five, we set up our actual data. Line number six, we import pandas. Line number seven, we uh, set up stuff for our, our um, k-fold uh, validation, more about that later. Line number nine, right here, we are going to make our train test split. I don't know, if, yeah, we're gonna use that. Uh, line number nine, more about k-fold again. And line number 10, our mean square error is going to be the metric that we're trying to compare our model, that we, we will compare our models with. So just press control enter. Everything is nice and ready. So now we're going to do our data preparation. There's not a whole lot we need to do. We have to draw some NAs, and I need to explain what, we're, what our dependent value variable is going to be. So what we're going to do here is we're taking variables from the data set called cancer and pi data set, and we're going to try to predict how much weight people lose when they're you know, sick with cancer. That's what we're trying to predict. So you can see our Y here is weight loss, which of course is continuous, and our dependent variable is going to be like you know time, how long they're sick, their gender, pH dot carnal and PAT carnal has to do with like calories, their status, and of course uh, the meals per calorie or something like that. Again, you can look at the details of this inside the pi data set. So the first thing we're going to make now is our baseline regression model. This is kind of messy, so I need to explain several things here. Okay, in line number one, we are setting up our cross-validation. So we're using the k-fold um, function and the number of splits is 10. We're going to shuffle and the random state is like the seed number and that's set to one. And then right here in lines four through seven, uh, excuse me, yeah, four through seven, we have a for loop going. So we're going to do for depth and range. And of course, you know, you're going to learn what that is in a second. We're going to have a range of one to 10. And so we're going to make a regression tree right here in line number three. So basically we're going to make 10 regression trees and we're going to see which one, you know, gives us the best value here in terms of the mean square error. So the max depth is going to be set to depth. Um, again, depth is going to be somewhere between one and 10 obviously. And so right here in line number four, we are going to set up our regression tree and we're, like I said, it's going to be, the depth is going to be set from one to 10. Uh, the depth is one of the, the parameters you can set inside a decision tree. And then in line six, once we of course get through all 10 of our models here, 
we're going to take a break and we're going to calculate the score, the, the mean squared error for each one. So it looks complicated, but go ahead and take a look at this. Now we have the code right here. I already explained it, but you have to be very careful with the indentation when you are putting in the stuff for the for loops. So at the top, I'm setting up the values for my cross validation, like I already told you. And this information in line number one is going to be right here when we're trying to calculate the score. So I'm just writing it here in line number one so that I don't have to put it all inside my code here. Then the rest is all happening from lines two to eight is all the for loop. So my depth is going to be set from one to 10. This ideal for depth is going to be right here inside line four when we're trying to figure out how deep we want the tree to go, how many layers down, if you will. Then we're going to, of course, call our, our we're going to make an object called tree regressor and we're going to call our, our decision tree regressor right here. And of course, depth is going to be set to this guy up here, which is one to 10. Random status are seed. And then if the tree regressor dot fit X, Y, if max depth is less than depth, so from one all the way up to basically nine, we're going to make a break and we're going to calculate the score and we're going to print the depth and the score together. So you can see if you look, I know it's hard to tell, but you can see that the, tr the tree with the least amount of error is of course going to be with a depth of two. And uh, our metric here, the mean square error is 176. That's going to be uh, what we're trying to beat when we are doing our add a boost. So to do the add a boost, we have to tune our hyperparameters. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And of course, hyperparameters are parameters that the algorithm cannot set itself. So you have to put in a range of them to see what, what will work the best. So in this code here at the top, I call uh, instance of my add a boost regressor. Then in my search grid, I set three different hyperparameters, number of estimators, learning rate, and I'm sorry, only two, I'm sorry, two. Number of, uh, number of estimators and the learning rate. So number of estimators is set at 500, 100, and 2,000. Learning rate is set at, you know, you can see the values there. And the random state is always set to one. So now in line number four for my grid search parameter, I'm going to take my add a boost regressor. That's this guy right here. He's the estimator. For the parameter, I'm going to take the search grid. That's these guys right here. In lines two and three. They're going to be represented right here in line number four. And then our metric is going to be a uh, mean square error. Number of jobs is one and cross validation. That is these same values we found in the previous cell up here in line number one in this cell. So I go ahead and I run this. It's pretty fast. There's nothing really to see. Uh, if you're really curious, we can print them. I'll do that for you real quick. So that's the search grid right there. Now for the next little trick, I'll show you what the search looks like. And that's it, it's just saving the code in case you were curious. Now, we're going to search this. This might take a little bit of time, but I already have the results for you. We're going to go, whoops, go ahead and search this out. So it takes a little bit of time. So I'll just go ahead and show you the results. So the results are right here. So according to the, um, the search here, we need to set our learning rate to 0 0.01, the number of estimators to 500, the random state to one, of course that was the only value, and we'll get a mean square error of 165. This is a little bit better than the mean square error of 176 that we had in the previous um, you know, baseline model. So now, just for the sake of completion, we're going to run this by setting the hyperparameters appropriately. And so you can see right here, we got add a boost two. We're going to set the number of regressors to 500, the learning rate to 0 0.01. You can see this for yourself. Random state set to one. And we're going to score it with the mean square error. And this should all work out, hopefully. Again, it might be thinking, so I'll go ahead and print the results for you. These are the results that we would get right there. Almost exactly, it is exactly the same, which should not be surprising because we set the hyperparameters to the appropriate values. And so again, this is the power of add a boost regression. 
So we were able to reduce our error a little bit, which could be very valuable in particular situations. So let me see if I can review what I talked about and then wrap up this video. So in this video, we looked at how to use the add a boost uh, algorithm in the context of regression. And so our goal was to calculate weight loss based on the variables you can see right here in the X object. And so you first have to set your baseline model because you want to know how much better is Adaboost improving the model based on what will be the expected value for a regular algorithm that you might choose to use. So in this instance, we used a regular decision tree. Then we had to tune our hyperparameters. Hyperparameters are values that cannot be estimated by the actual algorithm or statistical model. And so we did that right here. We found out that we need a learning rate. You can see it's done calculating, same values. Learning rate set to 0.01, number of estimators set to 500, et cetera. And then down here at the bottom, we took those values from um, the grid search and we plugged them into our actual model and we got the same thing which is to be expected. So I want to thank you for watching this video. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.